What could be worse than a plague of locusts? How about an invasion by so-called murder hornets? Here's Luke Burbank. Ted McFall of Custer, Washington, loves his bees. Like, really loves them. Some people love their cats, some people love their dogs, and beekeepers love their bees. Some bee colonies are a little more aggressive or, or a little, little more cranky. Some bee colonies are, are faster to, to store honey. Each colony kind of has its own little personality. He and his kids even name some of the queens. I'm not sure that I want to say on national TV, but some of the names are like uh, Beyonce. Uh, our favorite one this year was uh, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, just, they, just silly names. Which is why it was so upsetting for him when he found one of his favorite, most productive hives had been slaughtered. That particular colony had a good 60,000 bees in it. They killed all the workers, the drones, the queen. They slaughtered every last bee in the entire, in the entire colony. The likely culprit? Something called the Asian giant hornet, which you may have also heard called the murder hornet. More on that in a minute. Whenever they find a beehive, they will slaughter all the bees, go inside the beehive, and then rip out the pupa and rip out the bee larva, and then they will fly that back to their own young and feed that to their young. I mean, I know nature is violent, but that's like horror movie violent. Yeah, it is total horror movie violence. And it's not like the bees are able to mount a defense because our Western honeybee are totally helpless against this predator. Scientists think the hornets hitched a ride over to North America on a cargo ship. And Chris Looney is hoping they don't get too comfortable here. They have one of the more painful stings that's known to, to humankind. Um, Looney is an entomologist in charge of exotic pests at the Washington State Department of Agriculture. Their jaw can actually um, can take a chunk of flesh out of a, out of a human body. Yeah, I mean, if, if they bite you, they can take a little divot of, of skin out. Um, and they use those jaws most of the time for, for mashing up other bugs and, and turning them into the, the meatballs that they take back to feed their larvae. I guess you'd be hard-pressed to decide which you're more worried about if one lands on you. Is it going to bite me or sting me? With five confirmed hornets found in Washington state, Looney and his colleagues are trying to figure out how to spot the hornets' underground nests and eradicate them before they start reproducing in large numbers. We're experimenting right now with infrared cameras, essentially, to see if we can locate those nests in the ground. The nest will stay at about 87 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, so in the cool Pacific Northwest mornings, they should stand out um, to some degree. We are in talks right now with uh, researchers at University of Washington to see if we might be able to use radio transmitters or radio tags as a way to follow them back um, to their nest. Yes, you heard that right. These hornets are so large, up to two and a half inches long, that you can actually attach a radio transmitter to them. To eradicate the hives, Looney and his colleagues will have to wear special hornet-proof suits because the hornet stingers are so long they can sting through regular bee suits. This is great. It will protect us from being stung, but you can imagine it's really hard to maneuver in this. First, though, they have to find them. So they've enlisted the help of regular folks, citizen scientists. This is trap 1535. Like Emily Neely of Burien, Washington, to make traps with orange juice and rice wine and hang them in their backyards. Then report what they find. Washington officials say if you live in the state and you see a giant hornet, you should take a picture of it on your phone and submit it. But otherwise, leave the insect alone, lest you end up like one of the people on this Japanese reality show. On the subject of Japan, the nickname murder hornets appears to have come from a possible mistranslation from Japanese, which went viral after it was used in a New York Times article. If you talk to Chris Looney or any other scientists, though, they'll tell you they're not really fans of the name. Murder hornet doesn't work for a couple of reasons. One of them, it exaggerates the human health risk. These are a human health risk. Like, like I said, we don't want to be stung by one. If you're allergic to one, obviously, that can be really dangerous. And even if you're not allergic, multiple stings certainly can lead to, um, to, to being hospitalized and sometimes rarely even death. But it turns out it's not that many people that die from this any given year in the places where it's native. Fall brings the giant hornet's mating season to the Pacific Northwest, and Ted McFall is doing everything he can to protect his remaining honeybees. 
to think that there's this terrible creature that's in the woods that's going to come out and attack them at any day. So I feel like it's a bit of a race for us to find them and find their nest and destroy them before they destroy our honeybees. What's happening? He's experimenting with different kinds of bait. This one that I'm trying is cat food. <laughs> um, checks on his hives regularly. So all these frames are going to be full of honey uh, in the next uh, few weeks. And as an absolute last resort, he's even stashed one of his daughter's tennis rackets in a bag near his traps. You know, back in high school, I had a pretty good serve. And I haven't played tennis since then, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a way that I may, uh, I may decide to fight the, the hornets this way. Desperate times calling for desperate measures in the ongoing battle between man and terrifying beast.